What's up, everybody? So Deep Tuma back here with another NBA Draft Player Breakdown. This time we'll be looking at Kennedy Chandler, the Tennessee point guard, the very small, undersized, six foot, hundred seventy one pound Kennedy Chandler. Small but very, very talented, very, very athletic, and he's a really interesting draft prospect. Came in as a very high recruit, um, been doing pretty good on the season. Scoring almost 14 points a game, uh, about 46% shooting, I believe the number is. And he's, he's had a pretty good um, season for Tennessee. And the freshman has really, I guess, I don't know if it's even elevated. His draft stock started pretty high coming into the year and very early on. He looked like a lottery pick, maybe bounced around a little bit. And there's obviously concerns about his size. But I think, you know, there's a lot of traits about him that'll kind of overtake that and obviously you start with the athleticism right this guy is a tremendous athlete and over here we'll just look at one play just to highlight that you'll see his speed in the open court um this quickness very you know a lot of quick twitch very very shifty with the ball in his hands but also probably one of the fastest players in the nation so you see him over here uh watch off this just grabs steel and just gets out in open space and that's really his you know the back one everything right a lethal first step a lot of talent a lot of skill um, and a very smart high IQ player he's a true floor general a lot of things he talks about or people talk about him right his maturity his uh, game management skills just just and you see a lot of it as you see and you watch him the way he moves the ball ahead even when he's not creating he's a very good passer but even when he's not creating for others, he just understands how to be a floor general, how to be a point guard, keep the ball moving, swing it around, get guys the ball in space, push it down in transition, all these different type of things. And over here, we'll start with his ability to get downhill because that is tremendous, right? Even though he's undersized, he is obviously, like I said, lethal first step, able to get to the basket. Um, and he and he kind of he mixes it up, right? He's got that skill, a very tight handle, very good cra um, creativity. Um, somewhat crafty near the rim with his finishing ability and everything. So you got him up here in transition. Just watch the speed, right? But the start stop, that little start stop, that you know change of pace ability. Um, we saw a lot of it with Jaden Ivey earlier on because he does that tremendously well. And when you combine that sort of blistering athleticism, it, it's it's very difficult. And I think Ivey's probably a better athlete, but <laughs> it's really like comparing Ferraris and uh, Lamborghinis. Uh, when you talk about their athleticism, right? I mean, you see it, right? Just a little start stop, has uh, there's a slight hesitation because they gets a step and finishes through. Can finish with either hand, very skilled. Over here, you see him once again with the ball in transition, and this time he's going to get switched on big man, right? Patiently steps out, and then now he's got the matchup he wants F on Efton Reed, and you see it just cross over over there. And I love this, right? It's it's again small subtle things, intelligence as he's driving. You see the body control with him just going up, but it's using the basket as a um, as a protection from you know being blocked. I mean, it's a smart thing, right? Use a basket as a way to avoid a shot blocker. It's very smart, and so he gets the ball up. Reed can't touch it, and it's easy layup. Well, easy for him. Over here, you got it one more time. Ball at the top. Watch him size up, and then go. And love that. And you love it because he's got very good floater as well. Um, that's definitely in his arsenal. But again, it's it's the handles, right? He's got he can combine string moves together very well, um, and then goes in, will move and stop. And he doesn't force it, right? He doesn't force that pass because not going anywhere. Doesn't force up a layup and take a bad shot. Instead, he he you know, he works around, and then he's got that little shot put right there, puts it up there. And another thing he does very well, which is very interesting, right? When you talk about a player of his stature, you're typically thinking. You know, a lot of floaters, a lot of uh, fading away, struggling to finish through contact. He's got a surprisingly amount, or surprising amount of strength for standing at his, uh, you know, small frame. And he has a six seven wingspan, so that definitely helps him on both sides of the ball. But um, he does have underrated strength and is able to finish through contact a lot of times, which definitely helps him. And you'll see it here, right? Ball at the top, and as play starts, he goes in and then just bursts and takes in a body. Um, and this one really, I mean, you got him over here. Watch as that play goes on. This is pretty simple, right? Just drives in and seeks that. I mean, look at that. He's just going into the body of Lance Ware um, as he seeks that contact. Body through and puts it up there. 
And he's not just throwing it up here either. I mean, it's from farther away. It looks like it might just be chucked up. But he has that touch and he has that feel around. Um, you see him a lot to go through bodies and finish. And it's impressive for his skill. Or sorry, excuse me, for his size and his stature. Over here, now you start to see some of the issues, right? It's it's at six foot. Obviously, he's not going to be an elite finisher um, in all aspects. What he does struggle is against length, which is natural, right? When you're that size, this is why the NBA drafts on size athleticism a lot more than it does just on pure skills, right? For every thousand Frank Masons, you get one Fred Van Fleet, and that's that's usually the ratio. But I mean. Not to say Kenny Chandler is in that same grouping, but that's why you know they get pegged out, pegged down a you know a few spots or a lot of spots a lot of times, no matter how skilled. But his athleticism really sets him apart. Um, whether his size is going to be the deterrent, that's you know that'll vary person to person. It really will. Um, but you see it here, right? As he sizes the guy up, goes in, and as he sticks with him. It, it, he isn't able to always, you know, go through a body or finish the floater or just get past the guy. So when he can't, as you see with the defender six on there, it's the length that he just can't finish through because of some of that. See it here one more time. So he drives in, and now he's, you know, matched up on Tari Eason, who's a big man. So again, that's the matchup you think you want. But as he's going down, Eason times it perfectly and sticks it there. Here, one more time. He's got the ball off of that, goes in, and just finish. And just struggles. And and that's some of the things you see. Um, he, he does give you a lot as a driver, right? And the ball, he's able to create himself. Works well off pump fakes. Obviously, he got blocked on that one off the dribble drive, but he's got a lot of those abilities. But there is definitely something to be said and definitely something to be thought about as he gets to the next level against, you know, bigger, faster, stronger. But... Um, what another thing you like is his three-point shooting ability. He shoots about 38%, not, you know, an elite shooter who's going to knock down um, like that. But he is a serviceable shooter right now. Um, very good on spot-up looks. That's usually where he flourishes. A little bit of a developing pull-up game, but majority is uh, the spot-up looks. You see him over there on the wing. Um, so as this play goes on, he just settles there, waits, and shoots. And as you see, not the fastest release, not the... Uh, you know, greatest shooter <laughs> in college basketball, but there it's definitely something that you can uh, count on for the majority, at least in college. So how it'll translate, we'll see. Um, but as this play goes on, you got Chandler over here. Um, so as that ball goes there, he spreads the corner very well. And then here you can see it, right? Mechanics are okay. His elbow sticks out just a little bit. Um, no, he has a very low shooting pocket, right, where he grabs it from. That, so that has something to do with it, and not the highest release point, but gets through it and makes it. But that's another thing that'll help him a lot as he gets to the next level, right? Um, when you talk about undersized guys, they really make do, and they um, really flourish when they're able to spread you out and force you to close out harder so that they can get past you, right? That's how Steph Curry's done it for years. Obviously, he's just, you know, an above-average athlete, but even, like, a Chris Paul, uh, with that lethal shot, you have to close out, and it helps him in the room. And obviously, all his other traits help as well, but you see some of those things. And this is what we're talking about, right? The developing type of shot. He's not the greatest, but he, he does show up major flashes and, and hits some, you know, difficult shots at times. But it's still developing. It's still, you know, inconsistent. It's not fully there. It's not, he doesn't pull it out all the time, but um, it's, it's getting there. You watch here, right? Love this. Behind the back and a step back. And watch how much space he creates, right? Obviously, it's it's this, right? The, he gets downhill and he puts pressure on you, right? So as he's hitting that behind the back... And he steps, feels a defender. I mean, you see how far, how much space he creates right now? And because of that, he's able to just go into that pull-up and hit it. So you step back, so fade away. He can shoot uh, shots off balance, contort his body a little bit. See it here one more time. Right there. And this is smart, right? In the pick and roll, just feeling out his uh, this defender right here. This dude right here, right? As this play is going on, he that defender, he decides to go under the pick, right? So what does it do? It creates this little void here. And because of that, Chandler can shoot and make it. 
Here, one more time. This is the one from deep. Uh, you see, right? Again, this dude decides to go under the pick. So what does Chandler do? He just kind of settles in. Still, they're giving him space because he's not... He's. I, it's, it could be twofold, right? I mean, he's, he's afraid of the drive and the athleticism and the downhill ability, slash not respecting the jumper to the full degree. And this was very early on in the season, too, where things were a little different. Um, but because of that, he gets up there, pulls a three, and hits it. And averaging, I think, 4.7 assists it is. Um, very, very good floor general. He He's... And as the season's gone on, it's gotten better and better, right, with his maturity and just game management skills. You love that because it's it on. It's not just a guy who's you know creating a very good passer. He is a very good passer, but and has superb vision. But also, someone who understands how to run an offense, how to keep the ball moving and and make plays like that. Um, but over here, you got the ball over there, uh, for here, near the corner is where you got Chandler. And just watch him break down Keon Brooks. And then as he gets there, the nice little dump off. And it's sweet because um as you as he's dribbling, watch the help defender, Oscar Toshiba, who isn't even really helping. His eyes are just frozen because of Chandler's ability to create, right? So you keep your eyes on Toshiba the whole time. And watch Toshiba, he get his eyes get lost. And loses it. And because of that, um you got this little backdoor cut that creates and Viscovi scores. Here one more time, and I love this one because it shows just the strength and the ability to push the uh, ball down the court, right? As he's dribbling, pushes that ball easy, and it's like it's smart, right? You're always just looking down, able to throw that down the court very well, seeing the vision to to see that, and the velocity, having the strength to throw that pass. Not everyone has that, but he does it very accurately, gets there very quickly. That's a, that's a key because when you're throwing it that that much distance, if you're not throwing it with the velocity it needs to be. It's either going to be knocked away because the defender is going to react, or he's going to get there and his his man's just going to be covered. That's why that's important to have, and he has that. The velocity I'm talking about. Over here, you see one more time, and you watch him just operating that pick and roll and just break down the defense, right? Right here, hesitation gets in the spot, and then creates that little pocket. I love that because um, it's again dictating that defense. Watch Brady. Or let's go back actually. Oops. Um, so, Caleb Love right here is a primary defender, right? He gets knocked off, and as he's trying to fight over the pick, uh, Chandler starts going. So what happens? Brady Manic has to start reacting and figuring out what's happening, right? So as Chandler kind of re realizes that, um, doesn't pass off to his man right there because you got Amado Baycott right there, so it wouldn't be the cleanest thing. But what does he do? He continues to put pressure, gets to a little spot where you know you might pull up from mid range or something. So now all of a sudden you got three bodies occupied, right? One, two, three, and what does that do? It opens up that little pocket, right? And it's that. And so from there you got the easy layup. And I really love his ability as a uh, pick and roll uh, ball handler. He operates in these situations very well as a scorer, as a passer, uh, does a good job. And we'll see him here. Operate. So the pick comes over here and then just goes. It, it's it's uh, it's very impressive what he can do. And again, you see the athleticism, just the step. And when he feels that, his defender, he feels a leverage, pauses just enough and just goes. And over here, as he passes that ball down, um, you're going to have a little handoff and just watch him go to work with the pass. Right? Goes, 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 and there. I love that because he's just working that defender and freezing him, right? It's the pace he plays with right here. So from here, you got Caleb Love, right, who's obviously sticking. So when that handoff comes, Love is stuck behind that pick. So now Dawson Garcia is put on an island. I believe that's Garcia. Um, and Chandler just patiently dribbling. And the longer he just holds into that spot and you know goes at a little pace, Garcia has to commit because he can't just fully go on either one. So it creates that little lane enough and opens up the spot for his big man to score. Um, also does a good job off the ball. Does a great job on the ball like we saw with those things. But he has a very good feel when to cut. And with his... Again, his quickness and his just, you know, I mean, his burst is ridiculous. Um, when he starts cutting and when he feels it out and just beelines for the bucket, 
it's very difficult to stop him. So you got him over here. Um, and watch that defender just over pursued by just a step, right? So once that ball gets here, watch him over here. This dude, watch his left foot. Right, left foot, right? You keep your eye on him. And then he sticks, right? And what does he do? He He's trying to play ball in denial and keep the ball out of Chandler's hands. So that creates that little, that backdoor cut, right? So what does Chandler do? He fills it out and just goes. Because of that, very easy. Like I said, it's the athleticism that gets him there, but also just the feel. More than anything. And over here, um, you see it one more time. You got Chandler up here. And this time, it's not a ball denial, but it's just a defender falling asleep, right? You got this dude right here. And watch as that play goes on. Keep your eyes on him. He's looking over here, right? Because this all this motion is happening over there. And he falls asleep, and Chandler feels that and goes. Like I said, it's the feel and the IQ and just the, the feel for the game and feel for your defenders over pursued. And this one I like a lot because it's not just off-ball cuts and backdoor cuts. It's the ability to play within the system and move uh, off-ball. You got him right here. Watch him run around uh, staggered screens and gets the ball. And from there, you get the ball with an advantage and just go. And from there, you you can make plays. You can score. You can uh, pass. You can do all sorts of things. Now, this is an area of uh, genuine concern. <laughs> Only averages 3.2 rebounds a game, and with his physical tools, you don't assume that gets any better. But a lot of it comes down to effort and just not really, um, you know, putting in a lot of effort there when he's crashing the boards. He's, most of the time, he's staring at the ball, or rather staring at the rim, doesn't really do much. Uh, if it comes to him, it comes to him, but you see it here. He's right here. And as that play goes on, obviously, his man has to come help on this thing, so Chandler slides in a little bit, but... And obviously, again, to Lance, where you don't expect to get the rebound. But it's a lack of effort, right? Watch him get behind and just kind of stare at the ball and as it goes. It's There's no fight. There's no step around. There's no anything. Like I said, even if he did, he probably wouldn't get the rebound. But you would like to see some fight. And that those will translate to other sort of opportunities. There are short guys who get rebounds all the time and right pile up some of those rebound numbers. Steph Curry, most notably. But there are very good rebounding guards. And a lot of and rebounders comes down to effort. So that's definitely um, an issue. But a small one, or a minuscule one, in the grand scheme of things. Um, this is a place where you love. 6-7 wingspan, like I said, helps him a lot. And it really helps him with piling up the steal numbers, 2.2 steals a game. A lot of that comes from reading passing lanes. But as just you know, a one-on-one -on -one defender, for Tennessee, he's been a key cog in their defense. And he's been an important part. And his he just excels on defense. Stays pretty steady off ball on his man. He's not the greatest of help defenders, I don't think. But he can stick really well you see him here on Savar Wheeler who's you know one of the quickest guards in the nation very difficult to stay you watch him slide gets a little help from his teammate but sticks nonetheless and has to pass it off because of that um, but you see it here this is really where he impresses and jumps off the screen um, over here in the corner you watch him and as this play goes on and ball gets in there he, he's reading because um, Zakai Ziegler his teammate right here has helped over right so as he's sticking in there now um kenny chandler right here has to take care of essentially two guys right he's watching over there because he knows his man over there so he's just reading the eyes of ty ty washington who has the ball right now so he takes a you know little step here because that pass might come there but again he's reading the eyes of washington but the moment he realizes okay that pass not there he doesn't go bite and overcommit. instead he's there and because of that, he grabs a steal. You watch it here. As Washington's going, and has a length, and again, the feel and just the instincts. So you love. Talk about instincts, you love this play. Um, so Chandler's over here, but just watch the ball, right? Watch how Chandler breaks on it and goes. Six, it breaks on it <laughs> and gets up, and again, the speed. No one's stopping him. <laughs> and again, you, com you combine all those traits, right? The athleticism, the physical tools, but you add in also just the skill, the defensive instincts, and you got a guy who's very well-rounded in a lot of aspects as a passer, as an everything, right? Shot creator, floor general, all sorts of traits. And, you know, in terms of talent, definitely one of the top guys, right? In terms of skill, in terms of pro profile prospects, 
he's very up high, right? <laughs> top 10, top 5 in terms of that. Why does he become top 15, top 20? Because of his size, right? And that's really the caveat here. And like I said, I'll let you decide. <laughs> Is it a problem or not? Um, the one thing you looked forward to, I mean, personally, I don't, not to say I don't think it's a problem. I think he, his... IQ, his athleticism, and everything is going to help him over uh, take that size issue, much like Trey Young did. And obviously, Trey Young was under a spotlight a lot more because he was, you know, putting up ridiculous numbers at Oklahoma, um, something ridiculous in history, in the in the history of college basketball. Um, but Chandler, so you know falls into some of those categories. I mean, there's very few Chris Pauls out there, right, who who play at that size and, you know, still sh- shine like that. Trey Young is becoming like that. But we see more and more of it. Um, there's not – there's very few starting point guards that are that short. Um, just very few, you know, impact players that are very that short. But I don't think the number – I think he can defy the numbers, right? I think he's got all the traits – and I think, like I said, it's, it's the IQ, the athleticism, all of it, I think, will overtake any of those size concerns because he knows how to play through and he knows how to play well and he will adjust. And guys like that usually tend to pan out pretty well. Now, not every team's going to be comfortable with taking a guy like that. Uh, that's the issue, obviously. But if they are, they might have someone who's you know, a potential star. And it's going to be interesting to see where he ends up what situation he definitely doesn't have you know the versatility to play multiple positions to guard multiple positions probably not there's, i don't think there's too many two guards who he's going to be able to stick with because of you know just a pure height and the ability to shoot over him definitely you know limited to covering ones but in the right system defense system he can um he can still give you a lot right and we talked about the steals i mean that's one of 2.2 steals he's one of the best steal guys probably in the nation um and that's just his instincts and his ability to create those sort of plays and get out and run transition. Obviously, his transition speed is, you know, blazing fast. But there, there's a lot of things uh, two ways. It's just depending on the GM and how they evaluate that size and those concerns. So it's going to be interesting to see where Chandler goes on draft day. Uh, but that's been the uh, report on Kennedy Chandler. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, Leave a like, subscribe if you did enjoy it, and uh, be sure to check out the uh, full scouting report, which will be in the bio, or excuse me, in the description shortly. Uh, But again, thank you guys for listening, and I hope you have a great day.